Um, my presentation is about improving the security of edge uh, computing services. It's mostly uh, trench boot, so open source dynamic root of trust uh, framework, uh, and it's a um, short update about status of the development for AMD, and after me, uh, Daniel Kippel will present about Intel stuff. So my name is Pat Krul. I'm founder and embedded system consultant at 3 m uh, Polish uh, consulting company. Uh, we're mostly doing open source firmware, core boot, um, we're also doing, we are UFI adopters, we are uh, Yocto participants, so we, we are also engaging in those projects. Um, so just to quickly uh, start, what's, what's the problem? Um, so I assume everyone knows what static root of trust for measurement is and what dynamic root of trust for measurement is, uh, but um, um, just, just to tell what, what's, what's the problem, problem with static root of trust and why we need dynamic root of trust. So first of all, um, Static of root of trust to establish trust state on the platform, we need to boot the platform. Uh, so when platform's running um, quite a time, um, we cannot say what really uh, the, the state uh, of trust for this platform is and to re-establish it, we, we should just reboot that. Of course, this is not possible in various situations. Um, we cannot expect from users that they will reboot the, uh, reboot the laptop every time they want to do something uh, sensitive. Uh, we cannot expect that uh, Amazon servers will reboot to establish a tr Establish trust, uh, so uh, that's why we need uh, dynamic root of trust. Also, uh, if we have like something like Lux plus TPM, so encrypted uh, file system, uh, which relies on on some secrets, it's uh, on unsealing secret based on PCR values. Uh, we have to have some mechanism that uh, after firmware update will provide new PCR values uh, to TPM. And doing that in a secure way uh, is kind of hard and challenging. And um, so the question is when we should do that uh, if we don't have uh, dynamic root of trust for measurement. Also, if anyone is familiar with, um, um, with vendor specific um, um, static root of trust implementations like uh, Secure Boot or Boot Guard, or, or AMD uh, hardware validate, validated boot or NXP equivalent, uh, they, they know that to, to even provision platform in, uh, with that feature, you need special tools. It's not like uh, we have open tools to provision everything and have uh, like boot, boot guard working um, without special uh, agreements with Intel or any other companies that, that are uh, named here. So that's also kind of challenge of um, static root of trust. Um, so we also tried many of these tools uh, and have to say this is very hard. Um, also, like well-established uh, BIOS vendors can have agreements with uh, good agreements and can use that tools without problems. So uh, having dynamic root of trust, um, we don't need static root of trust and can't reestablish um, trust in the platform. Mm, yeah, and other thing is like, let's say we, uh, some device coming to us from, I don't know, offshore, offshore company and we just want to make sure that what we're flashing, even if we're reflashing fully BIOS, um, is really what we want. Yeah? Uh, and uh, with static root of trust, uh, we cannot do that because we don't trust what came to us from, from offshore, offshore um, vendor. Uh, so we need some mechanism that can uh, re-establish trust in the platform. And this is uh, what dynamic root of trust uh, should solve. Of course, there are some, some minor problems with that. Uh, but maybe this is a discussion for, for the beer tonight. Um, okay, so, so as I said, like we want to solve this problem of re-establishing root of trust in a dynamical way. We want to do that uh, at any point of time uh, of uh, platform life. Um, this should be used also very, uh, very useful in cloud environment uh, when, when uptime is critical. Uh, when we have bare, uh, cl bare metal cloud environment, uh, of course, the vendor provides the service for someone, then, then the, this customer uses that, then reveals that, that platform, and want to we want to pass that to another customer. But uh, we want to make sure that the hardware was not compromised. Um, so we want to, uh, we need some mechanisms that can re-establish trust in that uh, bare metal cloud uh, component that we pass to another customer. We also want some remote attestation. Um, and of course, as I said, like securely flashing of the of the firmware would be also cool. Uh, this is this this is also related with what Thierry said on the previous lecture, um, that uh, when the hardware coming to you, they reowning the platform. So 
uh, in some cases we would like to reflash uh, firmware in a secure way and make sure that, uh, let's say, only firmware signed by us can be flashed in the future. Uh, how many of you saw that, that picture? Oh, one, two, ah, a couple. That's good. Uh, so this is, uh, this is screen from, um, from the Trust and Computing Group specification uh, about the Navi Microsoft Root of Trust me uh, measurement. It just showed the uh, life uh, of um, Dynamic Root of Trust. So let's say we have some platform. Uh, we boot the platform. We have to do for some implementation of implementations of Dynamic Root of Trust, we have to some, do some uh, configuration. Then we have so-called gap. Uh, this is, to be honest, our firmware. Uh, we don't trust our firmware that came with the platform from somewhere. Um, even if there is inside uh, static root of tra trust for the measurement, we just expect it to prepare environment for running dynamic launch event, which is, which is our um, hardware feature um, that uh, gives us ability to reestablish the trust in the platform. Um, so, and then when we, when we run this dynamic launch, uh, we should have measured environment and we should, we should make sure that whatever we're running right now was correctly measured in the TPM or whatever module, uh, security module we have. And from that point, everything we're running, we can build chain of trust, uh, despite what was, what was before. Um, yeah, so, so the goal of Trenchwood project is to implement, implement open source implementation because so far, I don't know if you are familiar with T-Boot. Uh, T-Boot is implementation of, uh, uh, of DRTM uh, based uh, for inter platforms. Uh, but the problem is that T-Boot does not support, for, for example, AMD and probably other uh, vendors. Uh, this is not like the agenda. Uh, so the plan is to create project or it's already existing and evolving. Um, that will support DRTM just out of the box with any distribution across all components that, that have to be supported, which is uh, bootloader, Linux kernel, um, and probably some, maybe in some cases, firmware. Um, okay, so I assume that uh, all the basic of basics of Transwood can be understood uh, by the presentation that I gave in, in the past on open source firmware conference and on platform security summit, so I uh, if this is new for you, it would be great to look into those presentation. Okay, so how the state look uh, today? I'm sp right now. I'm starting to speak mostly from AMD point of view, uh, because um, because like uh, this implementation is divided Oracle and Daniel like kind of doing more a a Intel stuff, Intel TXT, and I'm doing more AMD stuff, so SK init. And in our case, we're using PC Engine's uh, platform, uh, um, which is a core boot based platform, a kind of small router. Um, we have SR SRTM uh, implemented with core boot. Um, in this case, we're running uh, some payload, which is still in SpyFlash. This payload is Grub. Grub implements uh, all the things that are necessary for uh, preparing environment for running SK init. Uh, which is a special hardware command that, uh, uh, which is equivalent to this dynamic launch event that I showed on previous slide. And uh, then we execute special small binary, which is called a uh, landing zone. And this landing zone have all the primitives to uh, re-establish re trust in the, uh, on this platform. Uh, then this, uh, this landing zone calls Linux and some small init MFS. Right now we're using Qroot. And then from that point, we can k-exec everything uh, what we want. Uh, I don't know if you heard about k-execing Windows uh, on last open source firmware conference. Uh, I know that some people did that with VMware. Uh, definitely kernel is uh, possible. We did that also with Zen. So uh, this is how things look like. Um, so in short, uh, just to on, on the bottom, you see how this matched to the previous slide. Uh, what components in the colors is, is what from previous slide. Okay, so what's involved to make it uh, happen? So definitely we need hardware. Uh, and uh, if we compare, um, so we have Intel and, and AMD hardware capable of doing that. Um, we, we need some firmware. Uh, so we're mostly on core boot. We're doing mostly, more, mostly on in, in core boot. But uh, definitely this would be possible with uh, UFI. And I know that uh, Intel TXT will probably start with uh, UFI. 
Uh, then, of course, bootloader right now uh, only grab. Um, and yeah, so I have, uh, I have to move on. Um, so I have to, uh, more information here about platform. Um, maybe this is not the most important thing. What is, it, what is very important uh, for AMD is that AMD implementation can be fully open source. So landing zone is already on GitHub. You can look into the code, how it looks like. There is no dependency, no closed source dependency. In case of Intel, it would be very hard because ACM BIOS and ACM uh, init, um, which, uh, which right now are closed and there are no plans to open that. Um, and uh, our plans, uh, what we have to do is like, we definitely need some more protection, like uh, DMA protection for uh, landing zone. We're working on that. Um, yeah, so right now everything's working. You can, you can test that by simply building uh, a core, boot a core boot binary. Uh, plus adding some root, uh, root file system, and you should be able to check that PCRs 17 and 18 were populated uh, with, um, with correct values uh, of measurement. In case of bootloader, it's like uh, uh, 1,700 lines change uh, to grab. Uh, we want to upstream that. Uh, we're waiting for um, RFC for Intel TXT just to make sure that everything will be aligned and have common design. Uh, but but uh, fork of grab is on our GitHub and you can also take it and, and try to use that. Uh, we, we change a bunch of things. Uh, um, I will not dive into details because it's more about implementation, but our goal is to merge everything into the upstream project. Landing zone, it's like 2,000 lines of code. Um, uh, right now, it lives on trench boot repository. Uh, we try, so this is defi definitely related only with uh, AMD. Uh, ACM as init is the uh, equivalent on Intel side. Um, so this is this is very small, like for 32 bits, it's like 12 uh, kilo. Um, and there were many improvements since last presentation, and we would like to thank Andrew Cooper and Zen Project for supporting us uh, in improving. We added SHA-256 measurements, so everything looks uh, correct right now. And after implementing DMA protection, we should be good to go uh, and provide that to distributions. Okay, this is about DMA. And there is also additional, recently the Matthew Garrett pro provided post that uh, there may be other ways to mitigate DMA attacks uh, that may happen at the point of uh, the dynamic launch event. In case of Linux, I believe like um, Daniel will, will talk a little bit more about that. Uh, but what we were able to do uh, was uh, to use Linux and Uroot as a, um, as a DLME, which k exec uh, uh, Zen in which we run virtual firewall, uh, which was PFSense in this case. Um, and there are many patches that, that coming to, to kernel to support that. Uh, what we want to do also is uh, our reproducible builds. Interesting thing, uh, Eurot is written in Go, so uh, it's support, supposed to support reproducible builds by, by default, but only in you build in the same path. So, so it's not exactly, if anyone will build in different path, it, the, the chasm will be different. So this is not, this is not what we want. Uh, okay, so that's all. It's like marketing stuff, uh, 3M dev. Okay, thank you, Peter, for the introduction into the DRTM. My presentation will focus on uh, Intel TXT implementation, both for first for Grab and for uh, Kernel. My name is Daniel Keeper. I work for Acol, and I am also a Grab upstream maintainer. I prepared this presentation together with my colleagues Ross Philipson, who is working on the Kernel side, and Daniel uh, Smith, which uh, coordinates the Transport project in general. So some legal stuff at the beginning and uh, the Grab uh, thing. It was decided to choose the Grab because it is one of the most common bootloaders in currently existing systems, so we are focusing on it now. And uh, immediately at the beginning of uh, Intel TXT uh, Intel TXT implementation, we realized that we have two 
change uh, the boot Linux boot protocol. And uh, after quite long discussion with uh, x86 maintainers, we hammered out something which is called kernel infrastructure. It is a uh, an addition which uh, allows you to convey some information from the uh, from the kernel to the bootloader. Uh, currently, this uh, infrastructure is uh, Linux uh, kernel for 5.5, and uh, we will uh, build uh, all solution on top of that. Uh, we also need uh, to add some uh, commands which are needed to initialize uh, Intel TXT or uh, AMD SKNet. One is uh, one command will tell the grab that we have to switch to the RTM thing, more or less. Another thing is command which will load, uh, in case of the Intel TXT, uh, the, T, uh, the AACM uh, module into, into the RAM, and in case of AMD, SK, AMD SK init uh, LZ. Uh, I think that this part can be automated, and we at some point drop this, uh, this uh, load module, module command. Also, we need to add uh, something which is called a locator. This is a small piece of code which uh, move uh, the OS image in the final resting place in, in, in the memory. As uh, Piotr told, uh, currently both implementations for AMD and TXT are done separately, uh, but we are going to merge them. I'm going to post uh, that Intel TXT RFC uh, I, th I think that uh, uh, at uh, the turn of February and March, uh, I have to uh, admit that well, I was able to run ACM just before the force them, so I hope that I'm pretty close to have uh, Intel TXT uh, environment running um, at the beginning of February. Uh, and um, and uh, AMD SK init uh, will be revised on, uh, on uh, my Intel TXT uh, developments because we feel that much of code will be common for AMD and Intel TXT. Uh, so let's move on to Intel um, implementation. At the beginning, we have something which is called, uh, uh, at the beginning of the kernel, we have, we have something which is called SLSTAP. We can compare this piece of code to something which is called EFI stub. Uh, and it, this thing is uh, split in uh, something which is uh, called SL, SLSTAP entry. It, it lives in head the text section. Uh, because this section is tightly organized, we have to do some minimal things and jump uh, imme almost immediately to uh, SLSTAP's function, which lives in the, the text section. And uh, uh, SLSTAP uh, thing is responsible for all BSP uh, CPU initialization. So it means that it loads GDT, uh, checks and prepares uh, TXT heap, or enables uh, some uh, interrupts, wakes APs and park them in special place. Uh, uh, place. I will discuss uh, this thing a bit later. And also uh, this piece of code restores MTRS and uh, MSRs, which were clobbered during uh, Intel TXT startup phase. Um, also, there is something which is SL mine. This part of code, before executing uh, uh, and before executing any code or uh, accessing any data, does all measurements uh, on that data. For it, so this means, for example, that boot params or commands uh, or, or arguments which are passed to the kernel are measured. Also. Uh, if you have uh, initRAMFS present so, uh, as a separate module, this initRAMFS, initRAMFS mm, image will be measured. Also, this part of code uh, validates and loads uh, correct values to your uh, MTRRs. And after that, we jump to the kernel proper, and uh, initialization of TX, Intel TXT happens in something which is called uh, slant uh, setup. This part of code uh, lives in uh, setup C and is called uh, from setup arch. And uh, uh, responsibility of, of, of um, this, this, uh, this part of code performs following tasks. So it checks that we run in secure launch, uh, in, in secure launch, uh, uh, checks the platform is properly initialized, verify uh, VTD PMRs, uh, also re uh, reserve some regions uh, like TXT heap, TXT registers in E820 map, validates uh, E820 map uh, against uh, MDR, uh, passed from TXT to the, to the ML MLE, 
and uh, also uh, pass uh, uh, SCP IDMR prepared by TXT to, to IOMU driver. Uh, uh, also, as I told uh, earlier, uh, we have difficulties with starting a a AP, uh, APs uh, in SMX mode because we cannot do that in a normal way. So. Uh, after very long um, discussion with different people, people uh, Ross, uh, who is working on that, decided that the best method to start a piece is park them in special place. They are simply stopped in half state. Uh, we also cons consider busy loop, but I think that uh, it is better to just stop them in, in a half state, uh, uh, as I said. And uh, then if we go uh, in the SMB, SMP bring up code, uh, these APs uh, get uh, NMI API for, from a BSP, and uh, later uh, initialization happens as normal. Initialization hap happens uh, as normal. Um, there is also KXEC uh, part. This part is needed to switch from MLE, kernel, uh, MLE to uh, OS kernel. Also, it, 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 this functionality also will be used if, if we would like to reinitialize the RTM. Currently, we are focusing on stopping S uh, SMX mode. So uh, during the execution of KXEC, quite late, uh, when everything, uh, everything in the platform, almost everything in the platform is disabled, all IPs are, are stopped. Uh, 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 this part of code just does some uh, some uh, play with TXT uh, register and call as exit, and this uh, this causes uh, that BSP leaves SMX mode uh, and uh, later OS kernel is started. If we uh, would like to use the, the, the new OS, in case of uh, establishing new DRTM. We, we have to reinitialize pl platform and use a uh, getsec center. Uh, we also need some, uh, we also need in MLE some access to the TPM log. Um, this is needed because the security framework, which usually runs in user space, uh, have to get some information for, from the TPM event log. So uh, this this is done by ex by exposing the log uh, via node in the security FS. Currently, we had a review for second version internally. As far as I can tell, uh, Ross and Daniel currently are working on a new ver third version. I hope that it will be published soon, maybe together with uh, the, uh, the grab code, because both uh, pieces has, have to be synchronized, uh, because there is a boot, uh, there is a boot protocol and this uh, boot proco protocol have to be properly defined. That is why I think uh, merging pro probably will happen uh, in that way that, uh, first of all, the kernel will be merged, and then after that, uh, uh, if, we, if uh, the boot protocol is established, then uh, the grab uh, code will be merged. So that's it, I think. Uh, questions? Uh, also for my part and for Peter's part, Yeah, I know we, we, we ran through that very, very fast and probably yeah, sorry about you don't have background on, on the thread boot, uh, but if you have like any concerns uh, that jump up directly, just let us know. Maybe we can clarify that now. Yep. So how, how are you plugging into any kind of remote at a station infrastructure? Are you looking at that? Uh, I believe this is like way in the future, uh, but uh, but I believe this would be, uh, it's already used in some way by, uh, by some commercial companies. I believe Microsoft already doing that. Uh, so um, I believe you will re-establish a um, kind of secure environment um, on demand. And from that you will start, uh, of course, using TPM mechanics for attestation, send the information uh, about the measurements, and then if everything is fine, then attestation. attestation. Uh, this security environment can live in uh, both places. First, in MLE, and uh, second, can live also in the OS kernel, uh, which is started by, by OS MLE. We are internally we are looking at different solutions. Sadly, I'm not able to tell much about that. 
Uh, but um, we are also considering uh, open source solutions, which are currently are so uh, quite many, mature. There are so many remote attestation servers, and uh, um, yeah, that, QGNI, I think. yeah, yeah. So uh, I don't know what would we work with, with that, but I know IATF works on some standardization, uh, and like probably we are closer to, to, to that approach. I'm sorry, I missed the point. What is the reason of putting uh, Grab? In Mm, I'm not sure that I understand the question. Spy? Spy. In, uh, Spy. Sorry, into the flesh. Spy. Uh, it's like it just simplifies our development, and that in, it doesn't have to be like that. It can be on storage. It does not. Um, yeah, what's the what's the purpose of uh, placing Grub in Spy? It just in our case uh, simplifies development, but it, it doesn't matter where where it is because we we measure Grub. Uh, if you want a SRTN part, uh, then we measure Grub before executing it. So that's first thing, and second thing, even uh, even if we don't care about SRTM, uh, Grab executes uh, the RTM flow, and from that point we establish the trust. So we, yeah. When you say uh, uh, that Grab is measured, uh, uh, it means that you uh, each model is measured, or only the image. Uh, in our case, uh, in SpyFlash, you, you're not adding anything to <laughs> SpyFlash, so you measure you measure the the whole uh, payload, uh, so the whole grab, and you cannot like inter intercept and add load modules at that point. Uh, in case of um, in case of storing that on storage, it's like different case, and like we didn't kind of thought about how this would be. Uh, this would be not like May I add something? Yeah. Uh, I know uh, it is much easier to measure whole image of of the grab. Usually, if you if you would like to run the grab in a secure environment, usually it is done that you uh, have uh, a whole image which contains all modules. For example, if you run secure boot, a whole uh, image which is signed by uh, X for for O9 uh, certificate contains all all, all modules. Currently, if you use Grab upstream, it is possible to measure every module and every command which is executed by, by Grab. It is done by something which is called Verifiers Framework, and this, this framework went in, into the Grab uh, 2018, as I remember correctly. Uh, so you have two choices, but in case of uh, Peter, uh, Peter's solution, it was much easier to build a whole image which contains everything, and this way, you don't need to do, that, to do additional measurement from the grab. And what happens to this configuration file? Uh, excuse me? What happens where what? <coughs> this configuration file. Uh, yeah. So in this case, this was the, just a router platform. Uh, so it's everything is like always the same. So you don't have to, you don't change in configuration file. And if you need to upgrade the kernel, for instance? Um, yeah. So, but you upgrade in the kernel, and you should like you just change, you just replace the kernel. Uh, the, the, the configuration file needs to be updated. You need to yeah. If the parameters change, uh, then yes. So I assume in terms of if you have SRTM, uh, then you should care about how you know. I thought about the SRTM problems. Yeah. So you should care how to update uh, your flash image. Uh, with new configuration and which, with new components. But as I said, this is a deeply embedded platform, and uh, we should not do that like often, I believe. I don't agree, agree with you, because if you, such platforms need to be updated even more often than the endpoints. Yeah, so... Uh, because because the routers... Yeah, okay. <laughs> so we can we, we can we can take we t we can take that uh, for for a discussion. Sorry. This is yeah. this is you just the start. yeah this is just the development kind of setup and just to prove that the dynamic root of trust part work. Uh, we know that static root of trust is problematic. Sorry about that. We are out of time. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.